section 16.7, sound intensity. So we've already seen how sound and waves have it, this traveling disturbance, right? So the sound waves, it's that little jostling of air molecules. But waves also, remember, are able to carry energy. And that's the same with sound waves. Sound waves carry energy that can be used to do work. So if we look at the amount of energy per second, that's called the power of the wave, right? That comes from our definition of power, that power is the change in energy over the time. So power is an important idea here. And then we define sound intensity as the power that passes perpendicularly through a surface divided by the area of that surface. So intensity is written with an I. It's equal to the power divided by the area, IPA, right? So notice the units of intensity then are going to be those of power divided by area. So what are the units of power? Yes, exactly. They're what? What? Well, I, could, I could keep doing this forever. So the units of power are watts, and the units of area are going to be, in SI units, square meters. Square meters squared. And so these are SI units of intensity, watts per meter squared. And with this equation, we can then calculate how intense the sound is depending on where you are. So let's try this out with an example. Sound intensities. 12 times 10 to the minus fifth watts of sound power pass through the surfaces labeled one and two. The area of these surfaces are four meters squared and 12 meters squared. Determine the sound intensity at each surface. So notice if you're closer, it's a smaller area. As you move further away, it's a larger area. Which do you think is more intense, if you're closer to the speaker or further from the speaker? We'd expect that if you're closer to the speaker, it's going to be more intense sound. Let's check that with the calculation. So we have the areas and we have the power. We can use that intensity equals power over area and do the calculation. So I1 equals power divided by A1. And we calculate out, it comes out to three times 10 to the mass fifth watts per square meter. For intensity two, it's the same power because they're both the same source. The only thing that's changed is the area, which comes from the fact that we're further away. So the area is three times bigger. And so the intensity is three times smaller. You can think of it as that as you're further away, the air is more, the sound is more spread out. And so your ear intercepts less of that power of the sound coming out at you. Now, a couple of notes here. If you have a 1000 Hertz tone, the very smallest sound intensity that the human ear can detect is about one times 10 to the minus 12 watts per square meter. This intensity is called the threshold of hearing. This is like the very tiniest, tiniest sound that you could possibly imagine. And this is later going to be referred to as our I0 because it is our threshold of hearing. It is the lowest intensity of sound possible. So that's the smallest. On the other extreme, if you have continuous exposure to intensities greater than one watt per square meter, right, 10 to the 12 times bigger, which is a lot bigger, that can be painful. That's where you can start to damage your hearing and maybe not hear the high frequencies as easily. Now, if the sound source emits sound uniformly in all directions, the intensity depends on the distance from the source in a pretty simple way. So I want you to think for a moment, uniformly in all directions, what sort of shape or area would describe something being uniform in all directions from a single source. Maybe you thought about this, it would be a sphere, right? If you imagine that the source is right at the middle, then if it's going out uniformly in all directions, you'd care about the surface of the sphere. 
And that's what's shown here, right? We have this sound source at the center. It's able to emit sound uniformly. And in all directions, it's going outward. Right, so we can take our I equals P over area, but now we're going to plug in specifically the area of the sphere. So this will work if it tells you that it's uniform in all directions, that the area is just going to be equal to this four pi r squared, because that is the surface area of a sphere. So that is a really useful note. And this highlights why as you increase your distance, why the sound drops off, right? It's one over distance squared. So if you are twice as far away from the speaker, the intensity drops by a factor of four because it's squared. So that's a really handy thing to note. All right, let's look at a conceptual example, reflected sound and sound intensity. Suppose the person singing in the shower produces a sound power P. Sound reflects from the surrounding shower stall at a distance r in front of the person. Does the equation for the intensity of sound emitted uniformly in all directions underestimate, overestimate, or give the correct sound intensity? So I want you to think this through before you go on with the video. So go ahead and pause the video now. All right, did you do that? I'm hoping so. Well, this, this is our equation here for the intensity of sound emitted uniformly in all directions. Note, this is assuming that it's going in a sphere outward. So this is only accounting for the direct sound. The sound as it is emitting in a direct path spherically outward. It doesn't account for the fact that there's this reflected sound that's also intercepting this area at this location. So if we wanted the total intensity, we would have to add the direct plus any reflected sound. So we'd have to know how much intensity there was from the reflected sound. Reflected. There we go. So we need to add that, it'd be probably given in a problem. But incidentally, this is one of the reasons why singing in the shower is so enjoyable, because your intensity of sound is amplified. You don't just have the normal direct sound that goes out from you in all directions. It's reflected back and becomes louder. And so you feel more powerful. You feel like a better singer. It's also why you sound the best in the shower than on the street. But keep practicing, and you could get really good. So I believe in you, and singing in the shower is also just lots of fun. All right, this inter wraps up sound intensity. So we'll next look at how we can measure the sound intensity.